you said that you know pretty much what you said is that you you love the properties you know of bitcoin being hard money so um being a privacy advocate yourself and you did mention that zcash and monero do complement bitcoin in a certain way but you know bitcoin is much you know what bitcoin is doing is of much more you know significance so is it fair to say that you can you would you consider hard money of more priority than having total privacy on bitcoin if it comes down to you no know, choice because there has been you know certain discussions that you know talks and theories of people saying you know that the next major conflict in the bitcoin ecosystem would be between choosing between um hard money and total privacy, you know, with you know, there are people who are you know very you know privacy centric, you know, and oriented in what they do, and there are people who feel like you know hard money is all that there is you know to be big on because if you're going to have Bitcoin adopted, you know, by governments and you know banks and all of that, they are not going to like Bitcoin having privacy on chain on an on the base layer. So for you, and um, just to get your thoughts, just to clarify. For you, do you feel that you know having hard money and you know, Bitcoin having hard money properties outweighs everything else? I guess, but then, uh, so what exactly do we mean by hard money? Uh, like, uh, I think for most people that means uh, like a fixed supply and and so on. Uh, for me, it's much more important that the rules are just set a priori. Like, this is why I consider Ethereum so problematic. Uh, it's not the inflation. It's not the like. Okay, th there's a long list of issues I have with it, but the the fact that these things change uh, so readily uh, is what I find so troubling. So, uh, from a monetary perspective, I'm not really concerned about you know Zcash and Monero being around, and and uh, if I remember correctly, Monero has uh, like an uncapped supply but a uh, fixed reward. Uh, I would have actually preferred. For Bitcoin to to work that way uh, again asymptotically that zero percent inflation so I think that even um, like still uh, uh, satisfies most uh, people's uh, uh, definition of of what a hard money is um, so um, yeah that that that's the first nuance which is like um, uh, whether or not things are managed in a in a discretionary way or not uh, and um as for the the trade-off between privacy and uh and this property i think the risk for monero and zcash is much more about um like the technical complexity it's that there is um the the possibility of catastrophic failure of the system because of some cryptographic flaw, especially one that could go undetected for a while, uh, seems to be to, to outweigh the, the downsides of um, the, the, yeah, this is a complex question. So f from, from a, a purely risk-oriented perspective, um, the individual risk from using Bitcoin, I think, is much higher um, because of the lack of privacy. Um, so as a user of a currency, I would be much more comfortable using Monero or Zcash because of this. Um, like knowing that my transactions are uh, not going to be surveilled, they're like uh, 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 this information could not easily be used to target me after the fact or, or, or people I care about. Uh, uh, it could not be uh, used to like criminalize, criminalize me if I'm uh, under some oppressive regime. Um, I, I think that that's very valuable, but um, is it valuable enough to accept the collective systemic risk um, there I'm not so certain because I I think that privacy in Bitcoin is, um, is something that we can still exercise a lot of choice about. It's um, I, I d despite the fact that there are uh, flaws and disincentives in the system, uh, right? It's it's much cheaper to destroy your privacy. Uh, 
I, I don't think we need that much overall to uh, establish. Um, so fr from a, a collective perspective, uh, like if fungibility emerges from privacy, I, I don't think we really need to do all that much to, to establish a status quo where surveying Bitcoin and, and Bitcoin transactions is just not a viable thing for governments or or surveillance capitalist companies to, to do productively. It's not a good use of, of you know, resources in society. Um, and I think that would be mostly good enough for from the, like the monetary aspect, like uh, that should suffice for um, uh, keeping the censorship resistance uh, properties uh, intact, in my opinion. From an individual perspective, that's a very different trade-off. And there, I think, uh, like people definitely need to use uh, tools to to protect themselves. Like if if you, um, uh, like I, I think Ledger's web wallet, for example, uh, has as one of its default, uh, like the the fee minimization strategy, uh, very aggressively consolidates all UTXOs in, in the wallet, uh, which essentially means like whenever you transact, you're revealing the uh, entire balance of your, your wallet to every one of your counterparties. And you're also creating like a linear chain of transactions uh, uh, that anybody can you know, trivially peel back through the change identification heuristics and, and so on. Um, so in a way you're, you're very, like th th there isn't even plausible deniability with that kind of uh, strategy for managing uh, UTXOs. Um, but you don't really have to go very far. Like I think even though we've discovered that Lightning, for example, has some uh, serious privacy limitations, it's still so much better than transacting this way uh, that for most individuals, it's it's probably a decent level of privacy to account for risks like you know getting mugged after you buy something online because uh, uh, somebody hacked into the website and, and realized that um, uh, this person whose shipping address was in the database also happens to hold like a large amount of bitcoins or something. Um, so um, yeah, the, the individual versus the uh, uh, collective trade-offs are, are quite different. And uh, looking at it from the, the broader perspective, I, I think uh, clearly Bitcoin is a more conservative choice. Um, um, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of assuming that, that people do more to, to protect themselves. And, uh, and I'm very hopeful that that's possible. Like um, I, I think Wasabi, for example, already does a fairly decent job of, of taking care of some of those uh, problems, uh, especially because it, it uh, as a light client, uh, it takes a lot of care to um, uh, handle the network layer of privacy uh, quite well. Um, for example, the, the way it broadcasts transactions is uh, um, probably as good as can be. Um, the way it uh, uses block filters is also really nice. Um, uh, and I mean, we're, we're trying to improve the coin chain stuff uh, to make it um, more, um, like use block space more efficiently uh, and provide uh, stronger assurances and, and remove some of the, the malincentives that are in, in the current system. Uh, so that hopefully, like, if a uh, if users who are more concerned for their personal privacy and, and safety, if they have an option, and on the whole, the ecosystem kind of accepts the fact that privacy, and, and this is an entirely political thing, right? Privacy is something that it's it's kind of a use it or lose it sort of proposition, where um, if enough people assert that they can do this without um, like, and, and potentially even, you know, take one for the team, right? Uh, uh, go through bureaucratic nightmares uh, with KYC uh, regulations and so on. Uh, by the way, like for me, when I was just getting interested, living in the UK as uh, an Austrian citizen with an Israeli driver's license, um, Coinbase just canceled my account after like one tiny purchase. So for several years, I had a disposable income and didn't know how I could buy. So like, 
I wanted to exercise choice, but I, I couldn't. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't aware of BISC at the time, and so probably I could have figured it out. Uh, but you know, uh, here uh, a, a choice was taken away from me because of some company basically covering their ass. And it's, it's like there was nothing wrong with what I was trying to do. They just decided that this is too much of an outlier. It's not worth the money. Like, I think all I bought was like 50 pounds or something worth. And, you know, uh, it, it wasn't even worth their time to to uh, answer my support request and explain why they closed my account. Um, only in hindsight did it become obvious to me that this is just, you know, part of their business model is to make sure that, um, you know, slightly unusual people are just not in their um risk models uh, with regards to, to compliance. Um, so the more we exercise uh, choice to, to kind of uh, assert that privacy is a thing that should be normalized, it's, it's something that we all deserve. And, and, um, and the, the cost of it in terms of fees or, or uh, you know, more externalized risks is um, sufficiently low that anybody can reasonably expect that, then, then I think the system will be fine. Like we'll, we'll win this, this battle between privacy and hardness. Um, it's, 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 it's a political struggle um, more than it is a technical one. Um, and, and yeah, in, in this regard, um, uh, this is also why I, I uh, decided to like focus specifically on coin joins um, because the, in some sense, the reclaiming of privacy is overt. Um, I think it's, it's definitely not the whole story for fungibility or privacy in Bitcoin, but, um, it sends like when you use CoinJoin to, to get privacy, that also sends a message. Um, and, and there's a risk in that, that hopefully people, uh, are aware of where, you know, coin joins are, are easily detectable. Uh, as such, but they're not easily uh, decipherable. So uh, even though it's an overt technique, it still um, uh, provides privacy and, and doing it that way um, is, is basically making a statement um, about, yeah, uh, uh, about whether or not there's, there's a viable future for this. Yeah. Hell, I mean, it's been, uh, it's been awesome. I, I appreciate, um, appreciate your answers because i say you've, you've gone over a lot of different topics and, and and kind of preemptively answered questions that i wanted to ask and i think the other guys too which is great so it kind of like uh, uh allowed you to kind of just go with it and, and give people a, a pretty good understanding of uh your why and i think it's also a pretty good example as to my uh fascination with bitcoin to be honest and probably quite a lot of people's um you kind of went to it in quite a lot of decent detail as to as to why um you can't especially that you said about like uh, the different options people have out there kind of just feeling like scams. Like it feels like everything's kind of built to just kind of screw you in some one way or another. Um, and kind of just, uh, especially with the, with the bankers not getting prosecuted and, and the, the financial crash in 2008, which is probably going to happen again, I would expect. Um, so yeah, I, I appreciate, um, appreciate your time. It's been awesome to, to chat to you and um, yeah. I also appreciate uh, Ricardo, Jerry for, for, for joining us as well. And, and, and uh, thank you to the, the listeners for listening. Um, it's uh, always much appreciated. Um, but uh, yeah, for now uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that. And uh, I hope everyone has an awesome morning, afternoon, evening, day, week, year, whatever it is. Um, but uh, keep enjoying life and uh, we'll see you all soon. Okay.